Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to talk about the Mitch Mason Maelstrom, which is simply one of the best compressor-style watches I've run across, as I think it strikes a fantastic balance in pretty much every aspect you can think of. It's simply a compressor-style watch done right, and I think this will become apparent as we go through the details. Now, this is a Kickstarter watch that will launch on October 1st, and as such, this is a prototype that was lent to the channel, so all your standard prototype warnings apply. That said, let's get to it, and first start off with the specs. So in terms of size, the Maelstrom has a width of 40mm, as well as a lug-to-lug -lug of 47 and these days I think that's fairly standard for a 40mm diver, although there is a very slight taper to the case as it heads towards your wrist, so I think it wears just a little bit smaller than that. As for thickness, we are looking at a total of 12.5mm, which goes from the double dome sapphire crystal to one of the coolest case backs I've ever seen, one that immediately gave me flashbacks to Star Trek IV. The detail on this case back is great. I love that it has some depth to it, but it's not crazy deep like some others I've seen. I think it strikes a nice balance of adding some extra flair to the watch without adding a whole lot of extra thickness. And as far as compressor style watches go, 12.5mm is pretty good. Most of the ones I've seen seem to run more in the 14 to 15mm range. Now, rounding out the specs, you are looking at a 20mm lug width, 151 grams on its bracelet, 300 meters of water resistance, and a Miyota 9015 movement. On the wrist, the Maelstrom is pretty much perfect for my 7.25 inch wrist, as it sits squarely where it needs to, with barely any overhang. It does feel a little bit heavy for its size, but not by much, and I think this is very forgivable considering how well everything is put together on it. One of the key reasons for this watch's comfort is in its bracelet, which has this very aggressive taper going from 20mm all the way down to 16 before hitting the clasp, which I think gives it a very light and kind of minimalist feel, at least for a bracelet. The case is beautifully executed, and I really love the nice organic curvy flow to the sidewall of it, which I think works really well with the polished chamfered edges that run down each side as well as the polished base sitting around the brushed bezel, which I think brings just the right amount of flash to what is otherwise a very tool watch-like case. I think it has a nice balance between tooly and dressy, and I think that's also something you could say for the crystal. It is a double dome sapphire with AR, but it's not very tall for being a domed crystal. In fact, you really have to look close in order to see the domed part of it. So once again, it adds just a touch of visual flair, but does still keep the emphasis on the functionality. And as long as we're looking at the watch at this angle, do notice the drilled lugs. Now, moving to the right, we have the dual signed crowns. Top one for the bezel and bottom one for the movement. And they're both screwed down for those that are keeping track at home. They do stick out a bit, which I think can be a problem with some other compressor style watches, as sometimes they can hit the back of your wrist, but that's something I never had a problem with here. Rather, they just look extra long, and I think that does draw a little bit of attention away from the dial. However, the knurling here is awesome. It's just super grippy, and that's probably the best way I can describe it, but it is something you're going to notice as soon as you touch it. And because of that, they're always very easy to get a hold of and use. The internal bezel action here is bi-directional, as most compressors are, and it's also very nice and smooth. But I did run into one issue, and it's an issue I've had with some other compressors, which is where the internal bezel will sometimes move a little bit as you're trying to screw the crown down, which can be annoying. So on this one, I really had to push it down first before trying to screw it in. Now, as far as I know, there are going to be four different colorways of the Maelstrom, and they all look great, with this one being the dark gray version, which utilizes a very dark gunmetal gray sunburst dial that is then combined with a sandwich effect for the 12, 9, and 3 indices. While the prime indices are cut out, the rest of the dial is then painted on, in a rather complex combination of white and blue paint. The remaining indices are comprised of single white hashes, with a smaller minute indicator on the inside of the dial. Those hashes seem to act as a nice bridge between the inside of the dial and the slightly raised chapter ring that then surrounds it, which once again is in a matching sunburst gray. But here it also has smaller blue hashes that make up the minute indicators, for just a small splash of color. There are also these longer bars sitting at the cardinal points, and right at the edge of the sandwich cutouts. 
which I think look great, and then when combined with the hashes that are pushing more towards the center of the dial, form a very effective yet simple crosshair effect, which helps to focus your eyes where it matters most. Those longer hour hashes also do a fantastic job acting as a unifying element between the dial itself and the internal bezel surrounding everything, giving the entire design a very nice cohesive feel, as the internal bezel really looks like an extension of the dial itself which is something you don't find on every compressor style watch. And this is something I've pointed out on the last two I've looked at. My only real complaint regarding the dial design is that I think there's a little too much text on the center of the dial, sort of. I mean, there's not a lot of text here, but when you combine what is there with the minute indicators that are sitting on the inside of the dial, the entire thing does look a bit crowded. Now I do love the layout here, but being crowded is a side effect of it. So one thing that I would suggest is that they develop a nice simple logo and just use that at the top. The date itself is also a bit small and hard to read. I do like that it's at the six and I like how it blends into the minute indicators, but it is so small that it is hard to read at times. Although the handset itself I think is great. The minute and second hand are rather traditional in design, but the lengths are perfect and they are nicely executed. Whereas the hour hand is just really interesting. It's basically an oversized arrow, but it does have a very interesting and complex pattern inside it, which overall looks fantastic. And the only thing that I can think that might help the design a little bit would be to give the tip of the hour hand or maybe the second hand just a little bit of a blue color, which I think would help bring the chapter ring more into the design. It really is a gorgeous watch with a complex dial design that is still fairly easy to use. And I really appreciate how well the dial seamlessly flows together throughout, giving it a nice cohesive feel. So let's talk loom, but before I really get into the nitty gritty, be aware that what I'm about to say is specific for this gray dial version, as it appears the other three are using old radium colored loom, aka Fadium. And as we've seen time and time again, Fadium really doesn't have the staying power as regular C3 or BGW9. So I'd be willing to bet that this is the best of the bunch when it comes to loom. Now that said, the loom here is actually pretty good. The dial fades out fairly quickly, which is pretty disappointing considering the sandwich cutouts. But the hands and the bezel really keep up and even exceed the loom on a Seiko Turtle, which is pretty good. But Mitch Mason also says that they are still going to improve the loom as well as maybe even loom the date for the production model. So hopefully that'll help, and specifically with the dial, but as it is, it's already pretty good. As for the movement, Mitch Mason decided to use a Miyota 9015, which I think is really the perfect choice for the Maelstrom. At this point, you're probably sick of me saying the word balance, but once again, it does strike a nice balance, as it's a step above a regular Seiko NH35, but still priced less than Swiss alternatives. So you're still getting a high beat movement, but at a better price. It's also a little bit thinner, which is something they took advantage of here, helping to keep the total thickness down. As for the bracelet, the bracelet is awesome. It looks fantastic with the watch really adding to the tool watch aesthetic, as well as it has a great finish that matches the cases perfectly. You have solid end links, solid links, and a really good clasp. Plus, the end links are quick release. The fully articulating H-link design really helps it to conform nicely to your wrist. And as I mentioned before, it has a really aggressive taper, going from 20 all the way to 16 before the clasp. And I think that smaller clasp really adds to the comfort of the watch. There is a little bit of a gap between the case and the end links, and maybe that's there just for the quick release. But other than that, the bracelet is awesome. So in terms of value, the last I heard the retail price of the Maelstrom is going to be $599. But like every other Kickstarter, there is going to be early bird pricing, and here it's starting at $449, which I think these days is about average for a watch with a Miyota 9015. But I think it is a pretty good value considering everything you're getting, as the Maelstrom really is a complete package. As far as other watches to compare this to, it's a little bit tricky, as I think this is the only compressor style watch I've seen with a Miyota 9015. Most of the others I've run across are either a little bit less with a Seiko NH35 or a bit more with a Swiss movement. So if you're looking on the lower end, I'd say check out the Dan Henry 1970, the Spinnaker Bradner, or the Phoebus Eagle Ray Compressor. For just a little bit more, another watch to check out is the Second Hour Giant Stride, which I believe is coming out next month. 
And if you want to go even higher, then check out the Christopher Ward C65 Super Compressor, or maybe even the Fair Aqua Compressor, which are a bit more, but they're not just compressor style watches, but actual super compressors. Now, before we really wrap this up, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that is simply the amazing level of detail and organization that went into packing and sending me this prototype. As not only did it show up with a retail box, but it also had a second bracelet just for extra links, and I've never seen laminated cards before included with a prototype. And here there were ones showing the different colorways, the changes, and the specs. This is simply amazing. A lot of you don't realize it, but with these prototypes, I'm lucky if I see a retail box. Most of the time they just show up wrapped in bubble wrap. So what Mitch Mason did here is above and beyond what I typically see. And while that's not really indicative of anything of the watch itself, I think it does show a superior attention to detail, and that should reflect how they run themselves. Now overall the watch is really well made, with barely anything to nitpick here. It's simply a great compressor style watch in a fantastic reasonably priced package. And this is the last time I'm going to use the word balance, but the balance here that the watch achieves really impresses me. And I'm not just talking about in terms of the design, but in terms of price versus features and presence versus comfort. When I've seen other companies try to do this, oftentimes the watches come out just a little bit generic, but the Maelstrom is anything but. So bottom line, if you've been wanting a compressor style watch and maybe one with a little bit better quality than a Bradner or a 1970, yet you want one that doesn't completely break the bank, like say a Christopher Ward, then the Mitch Mason Maelstrom is one to look at. They really did a fantastic job here, and I'm kind of excited to see what they come up with next. But what do you think about the Mitch Mason Maelstrom? Let me know down below. And I know that this is the third compressor style watch I've looked at in the last month, but this is probably going to be the last one for a while. So let me know what other kinds of watches you're interested in down below as well. And if you enjoyed the video, you all know what to do as well. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.